So, congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm curious, obviously we've seen lots and lots of adaptations of Dickens' work on screen before, but not so much the adaptations of his life. What do you think that brings to the conversation about? Well, it brings up an age-old question as to whether you can judge a man on the same terms that you can his work. And I think um, because Dickens has such a... <laughs> because Dickens has such a cosy image, we associate him with Christmas Carol and meat pies and old-fashioned ways, that it's a, more of a surprise, perhaps, that... What you find about Dickens is that in his life he was complex and difficult and he hurt people and that he didn't necessarily do the right thing, whatever the right thing is, um, and he was suffered the human frailties of everybody else. And what do you think finding out the story of the women in Dickens' life brings to our reading of his work? Well, I think you... History of looks, um, particularly in the 19th century, the position of women was particularly kind of repressed within the upper echelons, the bourgeois society, women in the the, the more uh, lower echelons were, you know, struggling with enormous poverty, prostitution, disease. Um, and although the Queen sat at the top of that society, in a way, what women did on a daily basis was very limited. Um, and out of that, I think, eventually came the suffragette movement. So it, it, there was a sort of powerhouse underneath it, women who were saying, actually, I don't want to be this, I want to be more than that. Um, I want to have an opportunity to vote, I want to have an opportunity to, to not just stand behind my husband and do what he tells me to do. Um, and that's, that's one of the things that this story uncovers, is that actually, in a strange way, little, little Nellie is, is her own woman, in that she... She loves the man that she is mistress with, too, but she has to keep that secret, and the cost of that is enormous on her. Marvellous. Thank you very much.